Hey there everyone, my name's Andrew and this is Canadian Starships. Welcome back to update number three on the Galaxy Class project. This is the 1000 scale Galaxy project. It is a garage kit made from fiberglass and resin parts and it is a treat to be able to work on this project. So I have a few goals that I want to accomplish during this project and some of you may know that I am not very good at prognosticating what I'm going to be able to accomplish in an update but here we go. Here are the goals. First off I want to get the pylons and the lower secondary hull part refined and cleaned up and get the pylons installed onto the secondary hull. Now this is the joint, this is the connection that I am the most worried about on this project. I think the rest of the joints where parts are going together is going to go fairly simple on this project but this is the one that I think is going to be the trickiest. So we'll see how it goes. The parts need to be refined a lot. There are a lot of fill point uh, flash points on these parts that need to be ground down. Now, when you are grinding down or sanding down resin parts, please, please make sure that you are wearing an appropriate respirating mask so that you save your lungs from all of the resin particles that are going into the air. That's very, very important. So I need to get those parts refined and then they're going to be epoxied to the secondary hull lower part section. And I'm going to create a little bit of a um, piece that this will be clamped to to accomplish that task. So that is the first thing I want to be able to do. Then once that is all done, I need to start looking at window masks on the bottom secondary hull section. What that means is I have window masks that came with the mask set but I don't think that there is going to be enough for what I want to do. You see as I go through the painting process I want to be able to remove those window masks and apply fresh new masks so that not too many layers of paint get on those windows. The fewer layers of paint on the masks for those windows when they're removed the cleaner they will come out. So I would like to go through that process of masking and unmasking several times during the paint process. I will use the masks that came with the Aztec Dummy masking set for this kit, but I will also at least attempt to make some window masks for myself so I have loads extra to go through that masking, unmasking process. Once I have that sorted, then I want to start with paint. And what I'm going to need to do is do the inside light blocking for that section. Now any of the resin parts I'm going to do inside light blocking because the resin will really translate that light through easily. That won't be the, 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 the nature of the fiberglass parts for the saucer section plus the windows on the very edge of the saucer need as much light transmitting through the translucent-ish uh, fiberglass parts as possible so I am not going to be light blocking or at least not completely light blocking the saucer from the inside. Majority of that will happen from the outside but for those resin parts where the light will translate really well I'm going to do a fair bit of light blocking from the inside and hopefully save myself a whole lot of problems with light block leaks later on down the road. So not only will I mask windows on the outside but then any lights any windows that I want open on the inside will be masked so that when the black and the white paint go on the inside those will be peeled off and a light will translate through. Now I won't exactly mask those windows on the inside they will be block masked because you, you do need a, a good chunk of light to get through that resin in order for those windows to light up well. And of course not all the lights all the windows on the ship are going to be on so some of the windows will receive a black paint and then will be masked. So all the windows that are going to be on with lights on inside will get masks on the translucent resin and then when a black coat goes over then the windows that are with lights off will be masked so that when they get peeled off later on down the road they are blacked out on the outside. Those are my goals that I want to get accomplished in this update. Will I get them done? 
I don't know, but let's get at it. But before we get started, why not take a moment and click the subscribe button. And while you're here, click on that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. In preparation for installing pylons into the secondary hull, I had to clean out a channel, the brass tube, to go into. And that will create a very strong bond once that's epoxied into these channels. Once this was completed, I needed to make sure that all of the secondary hull and the pylon parts were refined, trimmed down so that they would fit nicely together. So here I've clamped the two parts down to a piece of wood so that they would stay nice and level and I'm very careful applying the epoxy with a toothpick. Underneath the ship I have a piece of scotch tape which is simply there to prevent any spill from leaking out of that joint, but it did come out very well. Time to move on to the second pylon. Here we have it, both pylons are successfully attached and it went a lot easier and a lot better than I ever could have hoped that it would have gone. Now there are some gaps and uh, that will happen on this type of kit and once I have some initial primer on, those will be filled with Aves Epoxy Sculpt and you won't barely be able to tell that there was ever a seam there. This was the seam that I was the most concerned about with this kit because it seemed to be the one that would be the most problematic and I am very happy with the way this has turned out. So my next step is actually going to be to work on getting the top section to match the stance of this bottom section here. So to get the top and the bottom section of the secondary hull to match properly, I need to reshape that top section. So what I've done is I've taken a tracing of the outside, both sides of the lower secondary hull piece. So that creates this pattern, which is gonna be used to cut pieces of wood. Here are the two pieces of wood and they will be secured down to another piece of wood and the part of the ship will just be sandwiched between them. So let's get the jig made. Two pieces shaped with the right curve on the outside spaced apart at the same width of the lower section. We're going to place the top part in and give it a treat with the heat gun. And once it cools, it should be right. It's time to move on to masking the windows on the lower secondary hull section. And this is the set of window masks provided by Aztec Dummy with the kit masking set. And this row up here, the very top one, are the masks that are to go on these windows. However, looking really closely at these masks, they're just a little bit too wide for my liking. I would like them to just fit a little more snugly into the uh, indented windows that are here. So what I've gone and done is printed, cut my own on my silhouette. And you can see with the, the voids here where I pulled them out and started to put them on here. Now the problem with the silhouette is it's a consumer level cutter. It's not a professional cutter and the consistency is a little here and there. So you can tell that I didn't use any over in the section here. That's because they're not as, as narrow as they should be. So they're not they're not uniform like uh, you would get on a professional grade unit like what Lou would be using. So I'm going to waste as many on the ones I print as I actually print, which is fine. I've got lots of the vinyl. It's not a problem. So I'm going to go through and my thought is I'm going to mask off the windows that I want to show as light. Then when the windows get a black coat, I will mask them off for the ones that are off. That is my approach and like you can already see this bank is going to be off. I also am not going to have one on here and one off here. Uh, to me that's the same room and you wouldn't have one window on one window off in the same room. When they're close together I count that it's the same room and they're either on or they're off. Two updates for you right now. First of all, the window masks. The window masks are a bit of a problem. You might be able to see here they are peeling off. They are so thin so small, so narrow, that there is so little adhesive on the vinyl that it's really giving me uh, a hassle to keep these on here. So I'm gonna have to figure out a solution for that. I really do not want to scrape paint on these windows. I might have to, but I really don't want to. Um, masking is my preferred method. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit more work on this to figure out how that's gonna happen. But you will also see that the 
first round of, yeah, filler. It's in here, it's in the gaps. You can see that white filler right in the gap. So that is the first round. I put it in, I've smoothed it out. There's there's gonna be a good chunk of refinement left to do here, but this is, this is just the first stage and it's gonna take a little bit of time to get that seam to look just right. But the initial putty work is really just showing me that I think it's going to turn out quite nicely. It's it's still very rough stages here, but this just shows me that it's it's going to turn out really well. So I'm going to see what I can do about about these windows up here. I may have to just hit the windows with a gloss coat so that the window masks stick better. Um, not so sure about that. The good thing is that this is the underside. This is the area where you're going to see the least of the windows because it's going to be on the bottom of the stand. So this is the best area for me to do my research and development to see just how to get these things to stick well, because what works down here is going to work on the top of the secondary hall section, which is going to be so much more visible. So I'm going to see what I can do about that and uh, see if there's a better method for uh, masking off those windows. The other thing I had mentioned in my intro video was that I was going to try as much to light block these sections on these resin parts as possible, which would be ideal. However, like the saucer section, it's got those really fine windows on the edge. Can you see them? Can you see them? Just right on the, right on the very edges just below the sensor band here. And because of the way that the kit is put together, you see there's a flat section. Uh, can you see it? There's a flat section here uh, that, the, that the top part sits onto. And because of that, if I do not keep the whole inside section here exposed so that the light gets all the way through, you're gonna have absolutely no chance of those windows being lighted. So either I have to choose not to light those edge windows, which I'm going to go and, and check out the reference material, see what, what the show, if those, if any of those windows were lit on the show, if they're not lit on the show, then I'm not lighting them because uh, then it's going to be canon. But we'll do the research, we'll see, but if they need to be lit, then I can't do any of my light blocking on the inside. I've removed all the window masks and I've taken the gloss spray and I have put down a coat just over all of the windows. And you'll see as I tilt it into the light, you can see kind of where that's gone on all the windows. Now it does look a little messy, a little splotchy, and I don't want to leave any of this gloss where I'm going to be laying down paint over top. So I'm going to take some sandpaper, I'm going to sand off the gloss that's on the surface, and that should just leave the gloss inside these window recesses so that that will help the window masks stick better to the model. I don't want them lifting when I go with my airbrush or the primer can later on down the road and getting paint on the inside of those windows. So hopefully this is going to solve the problem. I'm just going to let this dry overnight, cure overnight. Uh, then I'll tomorrow I'll sand that off and we'll see if that helps those window masks stick better. I've just pulled an episode of The Next Generation, the next one that I'm watching up on Netflix. It's a horrible episode, but the intro here, we can clearly see that none of these windows have lights on. So I'm thinking that since none of the windows on the show have lights on in the intro, that I'm just not going to have those lights on on the model. And that will save me a whole pile of trouble. Now, it doesn't look like any of these rim windows are on either. Now, this is the saucer section. It's a much more visible area. So if I can, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that we get light in those windows. But on the show, uh, on the studio model, this is, and this is the big one. This is the one that they did all the initial shots with. They didn't have lights on in this area. Uh, there we go. Yeah, it doesn't look like any of those are on and none of these are on either. So I think we should be good to not worry about those windows and it'll be quite in line with the show. With the gloss coat going on, I've sanded the surface so that the gloss should only be inside the windows and I've put on a few test window masks and they seem to be doing really well. I can rub my finger over them, they are not curling up, they seem to be sitting down really well. So it looks like this is the solution. I'm gonna go along and add all of the other window masks to the windows I want to show as on.
Window masks have been replaced on the bottom of the secondary hall where there's windows with lights on inside. And I've got to say, it went down so much easier with the gloss on those windows. Those masks with such little adhesive are sticking so much better. So I'm gonna flip this over and show you what's going on on the inside. I have started to do the bulk window masking on the inside. I had a conversation with my client and he agrees that because on the show, these very small windows along the edge aren't on, that it won't they won't be on on this model as well. So that means we can add our light blocking paint on the inside, leaving fewer coats of paint on the outside, preserving detail and making it look so much better. So these masks, which I've just cut off of the vinyl I use for the window masks, are going on anywhere where there's a window that's on so that once the light blocking paint is in and the white reflective coat is in, those will come off and the light will come through only where we've got windows that are open on the outside. And the light block will go a good chunk of the way back here because I will also have lighting back here where windows are on the piece that goes on top of this. So I'm gonna finish this off and then this piece will be ready for that internal light blocking. And that's all the block masking complete. And that's gonna be it for this update on the Galaxy Class project. I am super excited that I got everything done that I wanted to during this update. So. The parts were all refined, the pylons got installed, I got the window mask thing all sorted out. That, that, that took a lot longer than I expected. Uh, but they're on there and we got the bulk window masking on the inside and I'm so excited that I'm gonna be able to do all that uh, light blocking coats on the inside, keep that paint off the outside of the ship. The less paint you put on the hull, the better the detail is gonna come through. So I'm super excited about that. I am also excited that I've got a week coming up where I'm going to be able to devote full-time hours to working on this project. I'm hoping to get a good chunk of the actual construction of the project done during that week off my normal job and working on the project where I've got undisturbed time, I'm off work, the family is not going to be here, and uh, I'm going to be able to work full-time on this for a week. That's going to be exciting. Expect to see potentially some live streams coming where I'm just doing some work on camera, live, and having some conversations with you. So keep an eye out for those coming up. But I hope that you've really enjoyed this update. If you did, make sure that you hit that like button. If you're new to my channel or you haven't done so yet, why not hit that subscribe button today and help me get to 1,000 subscribers for the 1,000 scale Galaxy Class project. It's gonna be exciting. But for now, I'm Andrew, and this is Canadian Starships. Have a great day, everyone.